The Ingredients by Jason Reynolds. Summertime in Brooklyn means doing whatever you can to stay cool. Cool as in not becoming a melted version of in the heat. Also cool as in not sitting inside doing nothing, which means being outdoors, socializing in the midst of the buzz of the sun, that which serves as a heat lamp looming over the land of lizards, tough-skinned chameleon kids who blend into the browns and reds of the row homes, and the jagged grit of the concrete. Kids who, in an effort to be cool and stay cool, can only hang out at one place, the swimming pool. For Jamal, Big Boy, Flacco, and Randy, it's Kazukio Pool, a name they butcher effortlessly because they've never met a Kazukio, or a Polish person, at all, to tell them how to pronounce it correctly. Plus to them, it's just the pool. And on any given sweltering summer day when Bedstoy becomes a microwave, the pool might as well be called heaven. It's not really that funny, Big Boy says, rubbing his forehead as if his skin is a smudge. Y'all gassing it, making it something that it ain't. Ain't nobody gassing nothing, Jamal shoots back. Jamal, all head and feet as opposed to Big Boy, who's all everything, holds the door open for his friends each of them filing out after skipping the locker rooms. They never shower, never rinse or swap out wet clothes, not because they have a problem with it. Locker rooms are something they're used to from years of gym class, but because they come to the pool with no baggage, no duffels or backpacks. They come already dressed in their trunks and tank tops. They don't bring towels or any extra garments. The way they see it, one of the best parts about the pool is, all, is the wet walk home. The slight breeze dancing with the damp, sending a welcome chill up their legs and backs, and they know there's no risk of yelling mothers frustrated about the chlorinated water dripping all across the hardwood floors of their apartments because the boys will be dry long before reaching home. Plus, they're not going home anyway, at least not to their individual apartments. They're going to one apartment. They're always going to one, a collective dwelling, a base for post pool boyhood shenanigans. It varies by the day, but today it's Flacco's house. Y'all are gassing it, big boy grumbles. It was a band-aid, and y'all making it seem like it was poop or something gross like that. Bruh, Randy chimes in. You jumped in the pool, went under the water, and when you came up, there was a dirty-ass band-aid stuck to your forehead. Randy brushes his palm over his head. The water has turned what used to be his freshly brushed waves into tiny onyx beads strewn across his scalp. Randy is obsessed with his waves. Yeah, like a... Flacco tries to find the word while trying to hold in his laughter, like a, a slug or something. Shut up, Flacco, Big Boy snaps, swinging his arms loosely at Flacco's brittle birdcage of a chest. You probably don't even know what a slug is. Yeah, I do. It's a snail without a shell, dummy. Flacco tightens his face for a moment, cocks his head back, and purses his lips into a shut-your-mouth look. And it's slimy like you was coming up out of that water, Jamal follows up. No, like that nasty thing stuck on your forehead. It was just a band-aid, Big Boy barks again as they all turn onto Tompkins Avenue. Yo, real talk, what if that band-aid had some nasty disease on it and it seeped into your forehead and is now eating your brain or something? Tomorrow you're going to wake up even dumber than you are today. Randy's face is dead serious. And that's a shame, Jamal's is too. A damn shame, so is Flacco's. A low-down, dirty shame. A smirk now splinters Randy's smug like a crack in glass. Big Boy sucks his teeth, and even though he knows they're just jokes, he still rubs his forehead, not as if he's fearful of germs, but as if there was once a horn there, or perhaps as if there's one about to grow. Well, if it is, maybe it skipped my brain and is working its way down to my stomach, because while you're all so busy roasting me, I'm starving. Swimming always makes them hungry. They have no idea why, but it always does. Maybe it has something to do with them holding their breath, or maybe it's due to the energy it takes to tread water to stay afloat. Either way, whenever they leave the pool, they're always empty, famished. Starving, Jamal repeats. I could go for a sandwich. Ooh, like peanut butter and jelly, Flacco chimes in. I mean, that would be fine, but I'm thinking something even better, Jamal says. Like turkey with lettuce, tomato. Some pickles? Randy interrupts, nodding his head as if tasting the dill. Of course pickles. Some mustard on a hero cut in fours. Jamal rubs his belly as they cross the intersection on Green Avenue. On Tompkins, there's a bodega on almost every corner. 
Each of them advertises deli meats with the same poster for the brand, Boar's Head, which is the image of a perfect sandwich and above it, well, a boar's head. And none of the boys ever notice the wolf-looking pig with the underbite. They only notice how green the lettuce is, how red the tomato, the perfect folds of meat they've seen cut from a football of ham or chicken or turkey over and over and over again. Just like that, Jamal slaps his palm to the glass of the bodega, presses his fingers against the sandwich, and yum! I mean, that looks good and all, Big Boy says, but I was thinking something maybe like, you know, the beef you get with beef and broccoli from the Chinese spot? Randy, Flacco, and Jamal look at Big Boy like he still has a used band-aid stuck to his head. Just hear me out, Big Boy continues. You take some of that beef and put on some bread, and you put the broccoli on it too, right? And then you put the lettuce and tomato and all that on it. But what really makes it fire is when you put the hot mustard and the duck sauce and just a little bit of soy sauce on that thing. No mayo or mustard. Man. Oh, and you crunch up some of them dry chow mein noodles on it too, like how we sometimes do with the chips. Now that's a sandwich. Yo, it's good to know that nasty band-aid ain't affect your brain yet because that sandwich actually sounds mad tasty. Like with the tang of them sauces mixing with the beef. Yeah. Flacco nods. Exactly, Big Boy responds with a deeper, slower nod. Or maybe even like a some pastrami or something like that. Jamal, inspired by the beef and broccoli sandwich, revises his original idea. And you just stack it up, like a fistful of it. And instead of putting it on a hero or on slices or even on a regular roll, you put it on a hollow roll. A what? Big Boy asked. A hollow roll. It's like Jewish bread. Looks just like the back of your head, Big Boy. Jamal jokes, shut up. Big Boy rolls his eyes until only the whites show. Anyway, they sell it over there on Bedford. Kid I go to school with let me taste it one time and I was hooked. Delicious. You put that pastrami on there and then you add some Swiss cheese and some coleslaw, a splash of hot sauce for a little heat and a few corn chips for crunch and boom, you got your own little piece of heaven. Jamal slows his walk as they approach the next corner when it hits him. A challah heaven. Sounds like it, Randy agrees, not realizing that everyone else is easing to a stop. Randy steps out into the street. A car zooms by and almost clips him. He jumps back just in time. Yo! Flacco calls out. Whoa! Jamal yelps. What the hell is wrong with you, Randy? Big Boy says, now yanking Randy by the arm. A delayed reaction. Snap out of it! My bad. I'm just so hungry. I didn't even see the car coming. Do we need Flacco to hold your hand, bro? Big Boy asks. His panic immediately slipping back into poking. Why, I gotta hold his hand, Flacco whines. Because you got hands like your mother, Big Boy says. Petty, trying to clap back for all the pan- band-aid jokes. Sandwich making hands. My mother got bust you in the mouth hands, Flacco puffs up, and you best believe she passed them down to me. Fine, Jamal cuts in, extending his arm to Randy. I guess I'll hold Randy's hand. They all laugh, and while passing at another store, Randy slaps the glass. His turn to give another picture of the perfect sandwich, a five. I need one of them to hold my damn hand, he says, palm brushing his hair again. Maybe not one of them, but like a half smoke or a Polish sausage with some of that kraut stuff on top. I never had it, but it's called sauerkraut. It's sauerkraut, not sauerkraut. Sauerkraut. And do you even know what it is? Flacco asks. I don't care what it is, Flacco. I want it on there. I want the kraut and some ketchup and some jalapenos and some jerk sauce. That's what I want, Flacco. Is that okay with you? Randy's voice deepens to a bass. Hey, hey. Flacco holds up his hands in surrender. As long as you're okay with pooping your whole heart through your butt, if you good with that, I am too. Exactly, Jamal adds. You like it. I love it. Hey, Randy, you won't have a heart, and apparently because of that band-aid, I won't have a brain. But Flacco don't even have the courage to eat a real sandwich. He's talking about peanut butter and jelly, Big Boy says. All the delis, we pass it on this yellow brick road, and this fool gonna ask the wizard for peanut butter and jelly. What's wrong with peanut butter and jelly, Flacco asks, head slightly cocked. Nothing, Big Boy says. Yeah, nothing, Randy follows. Nothing at all. Jamal rounds it off. Okay, fine. Since peanut butter and jelly ain't good enough for y'all, Flacco adds a clap between each word, you know what I'd like to try? One of them veggie sandwiches I always be seeing these white people get. It's like a salad sandwich or something. 
Y'all know what I'm talking about. Spinach and some other kinds of leaves. Some Maybe some kale. And then they put the cucumbers on there. Some tomatoes, some onions, raw and grilled. Throw some banana peppers on it. Some olives and... What am I missing? Avocado. Jamal tosses in. Avocado. Yeah, hit it with the avocado and some of that spicy mustard. And put it on that crazy sounding dark brown bread. Y'all know what I'm talking about? That bread that sounds like a bad last name. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Big boy taps his forehead trying to remember... Uh, what's it called? Uh-oh, it's already started, Jamal jokes. Shut up! Big boy squawks. His shut-up's always at the ready. It's called Pumpernickel, again from Jamal. Pumpernickel! They all shout together and then laugh. So yeah, put all of them veggies on that bread. Pumpernickel. Flacco just has to say it again. And to top it all off, the Michael Jordan of all meats. Bacon. Bacon! This time, only Big Boy yells, but the rest of the boys nod in agreement. They're coming up on Hancock Street, which means they're approaching Flacco's house, which sits right on the corner. Well, not right on the corner because the bodega sits right on the corner, but next to the bodega is Flacco's house. Behind them, a disappearing trail of water, the drops becoming less frequent with each traveled block, each past deli. Finally, Randy says, right? Jamal co-signs as they climb the front steps. Flacco jams his key into the lock and opens the building door. And the boys, now almost completely dry, take the steps two at a time before barreling into Flacco's apartment. Ma! Flacco yells, kicking his shoes off at the door. No answer. He checks the bedroom and repeats, Ma! Nothing. Jamal, Big Boy, and Randy remove their shoes as well, then flop down on the couch in the living room, right in front of the air conditioner. And when Flacco reappears, he's holding a bottle of lotion. This is also tradition. The chlorine dries their skin out, scales it, and covers it in a layer of uncomfortable white. The boys smear it all over their arms and faces, in between their fingers, and in the corner of their mouths. They rub it on their kneecaps and up and down their ashen legs, the dryness fading like static, coming into a clear picture. So we eating? Big Boy asks, rubbing his hands together. Oh, we definitely eating, Flacco says, heading into the kitchen. Pumpernickel, Jamal murmurs under his breath, a grin on his face. Why do you say you wanted pastrami, right? Randy asks Jamal, his voice punctured by a clanging in the kitchen. Hell yeah, Jamal replies. Even though I can't front, that beef and broccoli sandwich sounded like a winner. The sound of cabinets opening and closing. I was all for it, until Randy started running off about the Polish sausage with the sauerkraut and the jerk sauce. Big Boy confesses. The sound of the refrigerator door, unsticking, resticking. And then Flacco returns from the kitchen with four bowls, a box of cereal, and a half gallon of milk. Don't worry, he says. I got sugar.